Okay, thank you very much for coming on this uh, pretty cold night. Um, we have uh, we have a real treat in store. Uh, Laura Heritage from Axway has um, sacrificed her Super Bowl parties to come here and talk to us tonight uh, about the Axway platform, and in particular the API Builder. Uh, this talk is also more in the style of a workshop. Um, and as Laura said, uh, she brought some developers along. Um, bad move, guys. Um, but if you're stuck, obviously, the, the lads are here to help you. Um, this is, we're only having one talk this evening because this one is, is um, uh, going to take about an hour and a quarter or so, but there'll be the usual pizza and beer after that. Um, I just want to also thank uh, our sponsor, Four Theorem, an AI consultancy um, it was set up last year, and they've been very kindly sponsoring the beer and pizza for the last uh, couple of meetups. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now and hand over to Laura. All right, thanks. Thanks for having me. I, I mean, this is great that you have such a big meetup group that people come and attend. It's, it's a real treat to be able to present. So, like I said, this is a really hands-on meetup. It's a workshop. So um, if you need help getting stuff, just raise your hand and uh, one of the guys in the back will come up and, and help you and, and, and get you going. Okay. So um, just an overview. The first thing is platform.axway.com. That there's where you can go and get access to the capabilities that our platform has to offer in the cloud. What you need to do for this meetup is the steps one, two, and three, because we're going to leverage it locally on our system. We're going to leverage these two um, gists. The best thing is just to copy this gist to your, um, download this file to your system because we're going to be putting that in a directory. And um, this is just like, uh, it's my cheat sheet of uh, cut and paste so that we can, um, you know, not have to code everything. Um, then we're going to be leveraging, hopefully you all have your developer.amazon account and we're going to use ngrok for um, the secure tunneling so we can you know, leverage the stuff off of our laptop. How many here have actually built an Alexa skill? Anybody? No one. How many here want to build one? <laughs> Yay! Okay, so we're gonna build one. So why are we gonna build one and why is this important? When you, if you, how many people here work for a large enterprise comp company, right? And most of them probably are like in a retail or finance or, or healthcare. It's all about a connected experience and you want to get into your customer's network. So what, what is your network? What do you have? At my house, I have um, Amazon Hue. I've got um, Samsung Smart Things. Does anybody have Hue lights? Amazon Hue lights where you can change their digital lights, where you can change them off with an app. You can change them with you know who, and I'm going to mute her until we're ready to use her. Um, and uh, they're, they're great, they're, they're a lot of fun. It allows us, at, at my house, we use uh, Alexa to turn lights on and off, and we use Alexa to set our, we've got a nest um, to control our nest, and we have, we're, we're connected, we're very connected, and we have digital. So if you're a bank, if you're a healthcare company, if you're a retail company, you wanna integrate yourself into your customer's network and capture their business moments, events in their lives that where you can maybe sell an extra Amazon Hue light if it, if it turns off. So for example, you can talk to Alexa and say, you know, Alexa, turn on my living room lights. And Alexa could say, oh, your one light bulb one is malfunctioning. Would you like me to order a new one? So you want to be very integrated into your customer's experience. So I'm going to give a demo um, leveraging um, the Amazon Alexa and uh, the Amazon IoT button. Have you guys ever seen an Amazon IoT button? Anybody played with it before? These buttons are pretty cool. Um, it allows you to play with the IoT and simulate a lot of IoT devices. And in this scenario, this button, IoT button is going to simu simulate a smart pill bottle. Okay, so in the healthcare industry, at least in the United States, one of the major problems is trying to get your patients to adhere to their medical, um, to their medication, right? Make sure they take their doses at the right time, the right amount, and so forth. And um, in this scenario, we are simulating a pill bottle so that we can track when grandma has taken her medication. And we've hooked it up to um, Amazon Alexa so that if I'm I, I, I live about an hour and a half away from my grandma and I can't check on her every day, but I can have Alexa check that she has um, 
that if she had taken her medication through um, her health care provider, her health care provider, this is a fictitious health care company, by the way, is Griffin Healthcare. And Griffin Healthcare has partnerships with the pharmacy, has partnerships with caregiver services and health insurance, and um, wants to make an optimal experience and make sure that it's really important um, in the US healthcare system that your patients, as a clinic, you prove that your patients are actually following your healthcare plan. And part of that is medication adherence. And so this helps the doctors um, and the clinic keep track of grandma, but it also helps integrate into um, gram things that grandma already has and the family has. Okay, so here's the, here's the scenario. Okay, first I'm gonna be, I'm gonna play two roles. First I'm gonna play the granddaughter want needing to check on my grandma, okay? So I'm gonna pick Alexa up and I'm gonna check. Alexa, ask Griffin Healthcare to check on grandma. Hello, Laura. Grandma has missed the last dose of Tylenol-3 and was notified. The last dose taken was on December 3rd, 9.24 a.m. Please check on grandma. So now I'm like, oh, grandma has not taken her medication in a long time. I probably should have checked on her before now because it was like November 9th. But um, <laughs> concerned granddaughter. <laughs> I probably won't any worse. So now the thing that we've done and, and we've built leveraging the Amplify platform platform, our API builder, is um, if grandma didn't take her medication, she should have gotten a notification on her own phone. Most, at least in the U.S., most 80-year-olds, 90-year-olds, they still have the flip phones, right? They don't use smartphones, whatever. They like their flip phones, so they still like to get SM messages the old way. So if she would have missed her dose, our system on API Builder would have sent her an SMS saying, did you miss your dose? So not only could you have your granddaughter check on you, you you'd be getting a notification. But I don't have that notified now because I, I didn't set up the demo um, correctly. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pretend I'm grandma and say, well, did I really forget? All right, I'm going to, I'm going to do, that's, I'm just going to delete this. Yep. Okay. So that it's fresh. All right, so here's the Amazon, the button. The IoT button has three things it can do. If I click it once, it simulates that um, I, I took my pill, okay? I've taken my medication. If I check it twice, it um, gives me a history and also sends a history to my healthcare provider and um, family. So I, because I got that notification, because now I'm grandma, I'm gonna check it, tw click it twice. When I do that, you can see there's a white light here and it'll turn green once it's connected to the system and, and, and sent, a, sent a message. And then a message should come up on our screen. Uh-oh, that was a red. Let me try it one more. Uh, my button must have come off the network. It was working. Oh, well, the, the, two, the double click didn't work, but I clicked it once, which I simulates taking, a, um, taking a, a dose of my medication. And you can see it went and it, it got three, three doses. And I have two, I have um, remember to, so it tells me what, when I to took the medication, it registers it, tells me how many remaining doses I have, and it tells me to take my medication every two hours. Okay, so the, it should have, what it should have did with the two clicks, it should have gave me a history, right? But the two click for some reason was not working um, right now. So that's good. So, and then we got this one that um, you have three doses remaining. So grandma took her medication. So now as a granddaughter, I'm gonna check on Alexa again. And now it should say that she's taken her medication. Alexa, ask Griffin Healthcare to check on grandma. Mm -hmm. Alexa, ask Griffin Healthcare to check on Grandma. Hello, Laura. Grandma has 10 doses of Tylenol-3 remaining. The last dose was taken at January 31st, 2, 12 p.m. Okay, so she did, uh, she did take her medication. And then we also got um, received, um, what we also did is because we hooked into the pharmacy as well, 
that because her prescription was low, it auto went to the pharmacy and, and resubmitted and said, you, you were running low on Tylenol-3, you have three doses remaining, your prescription has been resubmitted to Walgreens. And so she could go and, and um, get her prescription, okay? So pretty cool stuff. Um, when you think about it, if you integrate with in, into, your, into your customer's experience, into their network, and leverage things that they already have in their, in their environment, um, you, you can get a real, you can give a real customer experience, a real personalized experience. Any one of these things by itself, the value isn't as great. So the more things you add into your network, the greater the value. Having Alexa with just as Alexa, it, ooh, uh, naughty. Um, having, having Alexa just as Alexa, it's neat. But it, what makes Alexa very cool is that you can connect it to your Hue lights, that you can connect it to your IoT button, that you can connect it to um, your Samsung smart things. So what if the next time, instead of um, when I asked if grandma is okay, what if uh, Alexa, the app, the skill, not only checked to see what, if she took her dose, but checked the Samsung smart thing for movements. Did your grandma move? You know, did it catch any motion sensors? So you can tell, okay, well, you know what? She didn't take her medication. She hasn't moved in an hour or two. So maybe I should call and have caregiver services come down. So that's the experience that we're gonna try to create when we build our, our skills. Okay, so um, we leveraged the Amplify platform, which is a, it's a very large, rich um, data integration platform that you can use. We have tools for um, building apps, for building, um, APIs to securing APIs um, for content collaboration, moving files, and things like that. All right. So what did we use? Um, this is basic uh, a basic diagram of what we leveraged. Um, our API builder um, is is basically a Node.js platform um, with Express. And we have a bunch of connectors that you can use. Um, because we were sending those SMS messages, we leveraged the Twilio connector and our backend data store for this demo was, a no, we used a no SQL connector. And we orchestrated those together using API Builder, which you guys are gonna be using today. And we secured it with our API manager and um, it basically did three different, three different things. Check on patient, patient, log medication dose, get medication history, okay? So uh, just again, um, API Builder is part of the Axway platform. It's a framework for building and hosting microservices. It's built on Node.js Express and Docker containers. We, we scale it up and down for you in our cloud. Um, it is a no-code, low-code creation. It's rapidly scalable. If you, you don't need to be a Node expert to use this. Um, it's basically, it truly is a low-code, no-code type of system. But if you are a coder, and you like your node, you can go down and, and play in the code and, and go back and forth, it works well. Um, today we have, there's a data orchestration engine and with a new flow edi editor, you can do transformations and aggregation of data. Um, we have a lot of connectors in the marketplace that you can leverage and, um, and you're gonna do this today, it's, we're gonna auto-generate the, the CRUDs for, the, for your REST API. So, this again is another view of what, what we're doing. We're gonna have um, some backend data over there. A client is gonna make a request. It goes through the API gateway. It hits our microservice built with API Builder and returns the data, okay? We're not gonna put the API gateway in today. We're just gonna concentrate on the API Builder portion, which is gonna run locally on our laptop and we're gonna use NGROC for that. So, why use API Builder to build bots um, and IoT in Alexa? Well, most um, technologies like Alexa um, and IoT, they use um, Node and JavaScript, so it makes a great framework. Um, the, the reason I like using API Builder to build, especially my Alexa skills, so in my spare time I build Alexa skills because I like to do it, um, it's because, and you'll see how easy it is. It, I can make changes to code right away and it takes effect, right? Um, and, and so you're gonna see how easy that is. The, one of the things is um, usually if you're dealing with a large enterprise, you usually want a tighter, you want your, your service to run close to your, where you're accessing your enterprise data, okay? So that's why it's just really easy to um, build Alexa skills with API Builder. So we're gonna see that. Okay, so this is our implementation. 
Um, we have our Amazon dot, and you guys are going to be able to use the test client in um, Amazon. Dev console. Um, we're going to define the skill and we'll talk a little bit about that when we get, I'll go through how we build a skill when we get to that point. point. First, we're going to implement our skill using um, API Builder and we're going to leverage a NoSQL database. Okay. So here's where we start to get going. Okay. We're just going to build a basic, initially, we're going to build just a basic Hello World Alexa skill leveraging um, API Builder. Okay. So the basic concept is to use an API, what's called a custom API, to uh, expose an Alexa compliant service. Um, you can, if you want more information on how to build an Alexa skill, you can go to the Amazon um, developer.amazon and view what the interface is. Um, basically, when we go through to build a skill, it'll ask us for the endpoint of where our implementation is. We paste in the URL where our API builder implementation is, which is your ngrok. Um, your URL, um, the, your custom API and API builder basically implements all the logic in your skills. Um, if you want more information later, you can come, I'll send these slides out to you. You can basically, there's two blogs, two great blogs that um, has it. And I hope you downloaded the gist just in case you did. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our API builder project. We're gonna copy over our gist we're going to start our project. We're going to edit the default security configurations for the demo because I like to work on it with security off um, in a demo environment. And then we're going to, if you don't have your ngrok started, you need to start your ngrok. And then we're going to go to the developer console and configure our Amazon skill. Okay. So are you ready? So bring up your terminal. Um, I've got my ngrok up. That's working. Okay, so um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have your directory where you, whatever your favorite directory is, and you're going to say app C new, because we're going to create a new um, API builder project. And it'll come up. Can you guys see? I'm going to make this bigger, as big as I can. There we go. Um, and what we are going to build is you're going to select down here to build an API builder app. Okay. And you have to give your project a name. I'm going to call mine Dublin. Okay. And it'll take a minute. While it packages it up. Okay, and then you should get uh, new completed. Anybody, everybody is okay? Did everybody get that far? If you didn't get that far, raise your hand. Somebody will come up and, and help you. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change to the Dublin directory and make sure I just uh, listed all the f um, files in there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, so we basically created our Node.js project. It put all of the things that, that are needed, like Express and all the imports and everything we need for our API builder. It's in that project already. The next thing we're going to do is that gist, um, which was called Alexa App Handler gist. This is, the, this is our gist of our hello world. And I'm going to copy that over. So say copy. And I'm going to go back to... There we are, accelerator. So here's my directory structure, um, the Dublin, the Dublin directory structure. And where I'm going to paste that in that directory of that project that you created, you're going to stick that and paste it into the APIs directory. All right. Okay, that's pasted into there. Now I'm going to open it up. You guys don't have to look, open it up if you don't want to, but I'm going to open it up. I use Sublime. So it's a really, really simple, this is a really simple um, API, okay? Um, the required arrow brings in the, the libraries that are required for arrow. Um, the important part of this is actually down here where it says the Alexa skill function. This is basically a big, huge switch, okay? 
um, and it, it basically defines the intent. And one of the things I want to show, where is it? This case here, here lists all of the intents. These intents, intents tell us, tell, it basically maps what you tell Alexa to do to the code, okay? This name right here, hello, Axway intent, that is the linkage that you're going to have to remember. So that's when we go build our skill, we're gonna have to go and define an intent called hello, Axway intent. There's default intents that come already out of the box with Alexa that you don't have to predefine, but you can go in and change, you know, um, change logging, or you could actually change the function there, but you can just copy that and just leave it. But this is where we added the intent. Okay, so now that we've got that done, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna push this away because that's pretty much all we need to do for that. Um, next, I'm going back in here and I'm in the directory of Dublin. What I'm gonna say now is app C run. So this is gonna start my, this is gonna run my, um, my service, okay? And install two modules. All right, after you get that, you're gonna see here there is a, a URL. It's localhost colon 8080 um, console. You're gonna wanna open that, that URL. Okay, I'm gonna go take a browser and I'm gonna localhost colon 8080. And so this is, what, what you bring up here is the API builder console. Is everybody able to get this API Builder console up? Let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. Has everybody got it? Nods, thumbs up. Okay. How's the, are you guys all, can I get at least one person to say they got it? Is anybody there? One person's there. Did you get it up? Yeah? Okay, good. Okay, so um, this is the API Builder console. Um, what it does is it shows you um, the project console. And when I click on this link over here, this basically lists the APIs that are within that project. And you can see that custom API that we built that says Alexa is right there, okay? And there's some sample APIs that you can click on. Um, if you click on it, you can see a post and you can actually test out the the API if it's, that's that, if it's that type of API. Um, API Builder gives you a model-driven way of de defining your API, so you can define a model. So let's say you wanted to model a, a shopping list or something. You can model the shopping list leveraging a NoSQL database and it'll automatically create your, the API for that. And we're gonna do that in a, in a, in a little bit. The next thing we're gonna have to do is um, this is the configuration files, and I want you to um, click on default.js, okay? In default.js, um, I want you to find this uh, API key auth type, and just change that to none. We're gonna, make it, we're gonna make it easy, okay? And then when you've changed that to none, click save. And this will automatic, automatically restart our server, so it's gonna re restart it for us. All right, so with the, this list some connectors that we have installed and you can, you can see different logs. Now, as far as building our uh, Hello World API, it's ready, okay? Um, one of the things you're gonna need, uh, I'll come back in here, you're gonna need to uh, know this path, okay? Because you're gonna have to stick this path on your, your ngrok um, URL. But we'll get back to that. Now we're gonna go into um, Alexa. So go to developer.amazon.com. If you're at dev developer.amazon.com, click on your Alexa skills. You'll get two things like this. You can click on Alexa skills. I have a lot of skills. <laughs> so what I want you to do is to create a new skill. You click on add new, oh, you can't see it. There's a button. Oh, okay, it came up. Um, you can cr click on add new skill. 
And it bas it's really easy. It's a wizard that walks you through. And we're basically going to take the, the default way through throughout this, this um, skill, building a skill. So give it a name. I'm going to give mine. I'm going to call it Dublin because it's really original. And the invocation name is how you want to invoke it. So when you say, Alexa, ask Dublin for yada, yada, yada. That's what you're going to have to do. So this is how you're going to talk to Alexa. So I'm going to call, I'm going to say Dublin. And it's going to, if you put it up an uppercase, it's going to put it in the lowercase. It wants it all lowercase. Okay. Everything else on this page is just take the defaults for now because we're just doing hello world. All right. We saved it. Now you got to click next. The next thing is the fun part. It's building the interactions, okay? The old school way of building these actions where you used to have to um, write your intention schema and it was um, in um, JavaScript and, and then you'd have to put all these values down and it wasn't as fun um, trying to keep that UI. But now they've got this new thing called um, the skill builder. And so this will make it better for us. And easier for us. Now, one of the things um, with Alexa, Alexa has basically two things. You have the intent that you want to do, like Alexa, ask grandma. All right, ask uh, Alexa, ask Griffin Healthcare to check on grandma. Like to check on grandma is the intent. Okay, so you can, you can say Alexa, ask Griffin Healthcare, or when I just did this last one, it would be Alexa, ask Dublin to say hello. So we're going to ask Dublin to say hello. That's the one thing I wanted to do. I'm going to, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change this so that you know. Um, I'm going to read, go ahead and change this code here. Oh, wait. Um, come on. Let's go back up here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change this. Hello, Axway. Oh. Hello, Axway from Dublin. <coughs> I'm going to save that. And I'm going to uh, control C. Just start that so that it says something interesting. Um, remember, I, I'm coming back here because this is the name. Of, remember, I said this is how we have to link. Is this um, intent? So, hello, Axway um, intent. So, I'm going to come here, and I'm going to click on add intent. We have. Remember, I said there's three default intents. I'm going to add the intent. Okay. Create custom intent. Create intent. Now, once you create the intent, in order to make your skill very smart, you have to think of all the different ways that a user could possibly tell it to do your intent, right? So to say hello. Somebody might say, ask Dublin to say hello. Or um, they might say, say, Dublin, say hello. Or they might say to to say hi, okay? Now, I'm gonna click on this build right now before anybody else clicks on this build because the build sometimes takes two to five minutes. The last time I did this at a meetup, um, we kind of crashed, we kind of crashed it because it took too long, um, but that's okay. So what we just did was with an intent, you have to have utterances, right? And that's many different ways that, um, and I just did three, but really when you're building out one, you're gonna wanna, every possible way that you think someone can invoke this intent. And this intent is pretty basic. We're not asking or telling Alexa really anything. There are some intents that you might want to get information, and we're going to do that the next time. And in that case, when you want to give Alexa some information that she has to do something with, for, with that information, that's called a slot. So let's say I need to add it. We're going to add something to a list. I have to define a slot called item and then every different way that I, ooh, I got my mind built. Every different way that I could possibly um, talk, you know, position that slot could be in, I have to put that in my utterances and we'll see that later. Um, and I'll work through that. I thought I was going to have to talk about slots a little longer because I thought the build would be um, 
a lot longer. Okay, has any has everybody else did that your build come through? Were you able to build? Okay, cool. So the next thing you're gonna do is click on the test. Oh, we gotta do, they make you go through certification. Um, actually, I'm just gonna click on test for successful skill. Oh. Go, oh, go to test simulator. That's new. Um, so now what I'm gonna do since, hello, return to developer console. I don't know why it did that. Okay, configuration. Oh, you know what? <laughs> That's why. Um, I forgot, I, we did our intent and I totally forgot, I was getting too excited, I forgot to do the configuration. So click over here on configuration. We have to tell it where, to, where our skill is hosted, where our endpoint is hosted. And this is where you take, if you go to your NGROC and get your HTTPS, so this is mine, okay? So that's part of it. And then if you come back to the API Builder console, and you can see that it's, this is the path right here. Get that part of the path. So it should look like this. Th it, this should be your NGROC host, API slash app, um, Alexa app handler. Once you have that, you just click save and then click next. And now you should be almost ready to test. Go through certification. And now we now that we have now you get this simulator here, okay? So you can scroll down to the service sim simulator and you can just type in here to say hi. And then you click on ask Dublin. And if everything works out, you can see what the request, what, what the um, request was sent to your service. This contains everything from, okay, you got your uh, session ID, your application ID, um, your user ID, which we are going to use uh, when in the next in the next round. And then it says you can see here is your intent. Hello, Axway intent, and there's your slot. And then this was what was returned from um, the skill. Okay, hello, okay, so now I'm going to say, I'm going to ask Alexa. Alexa, ask Dublin to say hi. Hello, Axway, from Dublin. That worked. Anybody else get theirs to work? Yay! All right, so now that was pretty simple. That was like a really simple, simple thing to do. But now we're actually going to make a skill that actually um, does something besides saying hi, like creates a list right? Store stuff on lists. So if you want to make a list, a shopping list or a birthday list or a Christmas list or whatever type of list you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our API console, okay? And we're going to go back to this part where it says build. We're going to do a model, okay? And we're going to create, add a new model. And we're going to name the model my list. And it's important if you're making this model to use my list because I've actually put that in the code snippets that we're going to be doing. So my list um, stores list of items, just to give it a description. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to add fil fields. So the first field we're going to add is user ID. Again, please use user with a capital I and D because the code snippet that I have is going to use that. And what we're going to do is each one of these devices basically has a user ID, uh, a device ID stored with it. So this way we can use this skill on multiple different devices and we can associate the list without actually having to ask the user for any credentials or anything. We're just using the um, what is on, on there. Okay. Um, default value, it's just leave it as string. Say add field to model. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add item. So it's a really, really, really simple model. All it is is a user ID and the item I want. Okay? Pretty easy. All right, let's go to next. 
Next, we can select because we're what what type of operations do we want on our endpoint? So we want to do the create, the retrieve, the update, deletes, and then you know you get the how you get the um, what the URL is and how you want that. That's that's pretty cool. All right, so let's save. So now that's building the API, restarting the server, and when it comes up, we should be able to go to our APIs. You can see my list in the list, and we can post. Um, I'm gonna test this so it, it you know basically gives you body parameters. It's a string we didn't make actually required, um, so we're doing it pretty easy. But I'm gonna just do one, two, three for my user ID, and I'm gonna say bananas. Okay, create. Alrighty, so that gave me a 201 crate. Is everybody else able to do that? All right, um, let's go look at my list. Let's get the list to make sure that it uh, appeared. And so there you can see we, we, we were able to build that. We have our user ID and our, our item that's stored in our database. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna, mo we're going to um, modify our Alexa Hello World interface. So you are gonna need to have uh, a text editor or something. The one thing we need to do here is we need to create, um, well, let me bring up couple, let me bring up my um, demo scripts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, because we're going to be making an HTTP recall uh, um, out to our um, API, we need to, if you go, this is in the gist that's in uh, L Heritage. Does anybody, you can go out to gist.github.com and L Heritage and you'll find the gist. Okay, so we're going to include the um, HTTP. The next thing we're going to add, it, the important thing that we're going to add is the linkage to the new intent that we're going to add. So we basically copy in that gist, you copy that whole line. Don't, don't do what I just did and miss part of it. Um, copy that whole line. And you can go ahead and I put it right underneath here. I'm gonna move my code over a little bit. All right. That is gonna be, this is the intent that when we go back to Alexa skill, the um, developer, we're gonna have to add, add to list intent. We're gonna have to take that and add it to the, when we build our, build our new skill. Um, and you can see here, this is in this code, um, it's, it's basically building the body for the post. You can see the user ID is, that we have there. We're gonna grab um, the, the um, actually, it's off the screen here. Um, for the user ID, we grab the, the user ID that's in the session, which is the device user ID. And then we're gonna get this slot called item, okay? So that we're gonna have to define that. That's all, that's all we're doing. Um, the one last thing I gotta paste in here is the function to do an HTTP post. I just copy that in there. Where'd it go? Just put that at the bottom here. Save that. And I'm gonna just restart this. Just make sure it gets picked up. Okay, we're started. And actually, just so I don't mistype, I'm gonna go back and grab this add to list. So now we're gonna go uh, bring back up your Amazon developer. Okay, we're gonna go back to our interaction model. So click over here on the side. Remember, this is where we're gonna add the intent. And I'm gonna add the add to list intent. This links it to the code that we just did that's gonna call our API. So we're gonna create the intent. 
And now we have to do the utterances. Now this is where we're going to actually deal with those slots because we have to tell Alexa what item that we want to store. So uh, one way of saying it would be like, uh, Alexa, ask Dublin to add item. Okay, and I just defined a slot right there. Okay, and the slot comes down, um, item is a new slot, so it's not defined and it's saying, hey, this is not, this is not a, a defined slot, so we have to give it a type. Um, and so I'm going to say new, I'm going to create a new slot type and I'm going to call it list items. There's some, there's some things, there's some slot types that are out of the box that you can use. Um, but then you can create your own. One of the things that slot, slots are used for that you can define a slot type. So maybe, maybe your skill only allows for um, red, the slot that you're giving only allows for an answer of red, yellow, or green. You can define that those are the only options and Alexa will determine, well, that's not the right, the right um, answer. But we, we're gonna accept anything in ours. So we're gonna come back up here and add to list. So we could say um, add, so we have to, again, we have to do many different ways of how this item or how somebody might say add to list. So we can say, um, Alexa, ask Dublin, add bananas. Okay, or I'm gonna say add, to add item to list. Okay, so after you've done that, all you have to do is click build model. Oops interaction to, oh you do have to create one default type item okay save close all right so now it's building you do have to add a default type under the item so just type anything and then it'll default it this this probably now is going to take 5 minutes because everybody hopefully is trying this So everybody's churning? Okay. Laura? Yes. Yeah, the code, the, the, the case of this item in, in that code, it that's the slot name that we de defined it. So yes, that does have to match. That does match, oh, okay, let me bring this up. And this Alexa handler where we created that, that's right there, the item, right? If I would have named that blue, it would say slot.blue.value. That stuff comes through. And so now that my skill is built, it finished, um, I'm gonna go to test. So we don't have to do anything because it's still pointed to the correct location. And I'm going to say to add cookies. All right, again, here's the request. You can see here's the intention name, add to list item cookies. And then we got our response. But I'm going to add one more thing, but I'm going to do it through Alexa. You know what, I can never think of what to say. Um, um, Alexa, ask Dublin to add guilt to the list. We added to list. Yay, we added to the list. So, so now when we go back to our API builder, we can go look at my list. We can get our whole list, execute, and we can say there, you can see there is guilt, there are cookies, and bananas. So we're able to now add things to the list when we talk to Alexa. You can do all sorts of things. You can do very, very interactive things. So one of the things, I, skills I built for my grandma, and it's a private skill, um, she lost her vision. And she used to love to go uh, read Facebook, but she can't read Facebook anymore. And that, because I travel a lot, I always put an update on Facebook and so forth. And so what I did is I created a Facebook group, and then I leveraged the Facebook APIs, and I built the skills. So all my grandma has to do, and I made it really simple for her, is say, 
Alexa, ask Facebook group to read. Here is the group's five most recent statuses. Ian Heritage posted message on September 23rd. Was up. Er, yeah. Pardon me. <laughs> My Laura husband Mank being funny. Posted message on September 23rd. Alexa, stop. What it what it does? <laughs> 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 It'll go through and read the, the, last, the, the last messages that I posted or she posted. So that way she can keep in, in contact with us. And now that she can't see her tablet, she doesn't have to talk to her tablet anymore. She can talk to Alexa and Alexa will tell her where in the world I am, you know, today or what I'm doing today. I just write a, a quick thing. So, so that's how you build an Alexa skill. It's super easy. I'm not a developer developer. I don't code every day. I just go and I'm able to use API Builder. I can barely get around Node.js, but API Builder makes it so easy that I can build an Alexa skill interfacing with Facebook APIs for my grandma. Okay, so that's great. And it does all the scaling and stuff for me. Um, the, the other thing, it, it kind of similar about how, just so you can see how I made the IoT device, it's, it's quite similar to how you work with uh, Alexa, except that, that um, with Alexa, they, they, uh, Amazon gives you an interface that you don't have to use Lambda, that we can actually use API Builder as the whole interface. With the IoT button, you have to use their Lambda function, and it's basically an if-then-else type of thing, right? You got, you know, if one click, if two click, if three click, do this, and you can go off and do whatever you need. So I have the Lambda function call um, our API, which we orchestrate and build with API Builder, leveraging the connectors to the various um, backend data systems. Um, so basically the concept is, is the same. We do have, uh, if you want to get started with the Amazon IoT button, it's really fun. They're in the US, they're about 20 bucks to buy and, and play with. Um, so you can buy one there. Um, the, the Lambda, like I said, catches all API uh, calls. Your API builder um, needs to implement the logic. I put an example um, of uh, an, I put an example out there on GIST so you can go and see an example of how you can change your Lambda function. Um, just so you can see, it's pretty easy to, when you get this button, it comes in a little box with a barcode on it, and you basically scan your, your barcode. Um, you download the app, the app asks you to scan your barcode on your, um, on your device, and then you configure your Wi-Fi, and um, you can select, I did Node because obviously API Builder's Node, but you can select any like Python or you can hook up to um, if then, if then, then that. Uh, and um, you can see the function and you can play with it. It's really, um, really easy to get going. The one important thing though, is make sure you go into the Amazon, at least when I bought this, make sure you're in the right AWS region. <laughs> okay, because there's several different regions and they only put it in the um, Oregon, U.S. West region for the ones that they ship in the U.S. I don't know what your regions it is or if it's different, but that's um, important. Um, again, this is just, you go, uh, once you find your region, you go open the Lambda. When you do that test thing, the test thing builds a Lambda function for you. And so you go find that in your account and then you just change the code, change the Lambda function. So. I told you it would be about an hour. Um, I said hour and 15 in case there was network issues. But basically, um, Axway's um, API Builder makes it really easy to build bots and IoT devices and, and really connect um, your networks together and make um, an, an experience for your customers and makes it very easy. We did it in you know, 15, 20 minutes of playing around and working.